This is day two of the DARPA Robotics Challenge. And the first events of the morning are actually really pretty cool. We got uh, Team Mojaveton right here. These are the underdog Track D teams with a 37 pound robot going against these multi million dollar robots. For our team, we're a very bootstrap team, and our whole robot's like $20,000. So the servos right yeah, here. These, these little black boxes. And this is your big investment. That's the big investment. Amazing. The rest of this, 3D printed plastic, you know, volunteer machining, you know what I mean? Nice pieces. Amazing. And this guy's out here competing with NASA level. Right. It, I, I, it is kind of a dream of the Trek D teams to score better than some of the teams we've gotten funded, right? I mean, that'd be awesome. I'm not sure we're going to make it, but we'll do our best. Okay. This is Team Shaft. These are the guys that are leading the competition. We're not allowed to be here. They, they, told are, they are tough customers. They are. We were like, uh, could we shoot some video of your robot? And they went, no. No. If we so, we're love so we're going to shoot a little video no, of the robot. Sure. When you talk about these robots and their level of development, they're at about, uh, what are they, one year old? They say they're like one year old, yeah. Well, right. They, 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 it's a kill crap, the program manager said you can't be a robotics PhD in order to operate one of these. You have to be a first responder, someone who's an expert in the emergency you're responding to. So, so what the robot has to you know, understand what the guy wants. So what they really need is a bunch of child care professionals. Right. right, like, you know, I don't know if any, any of you have operated a one-year-old before, but it isn't easy. It, but, you know, what if something happened tomorrow, right? What if something went south tomorrow, and they had to just go ahead and try? They would totally use these machines. That's all they got. Yeah. That's it. If they had to try, I mean, they, yeah. would, they would look through this, this group of That's competitors right. and they would say... If something happened today, they would send these things out. Yeah, they, they would try. They'd get all the teams out here. Every one of them, they'd set them up with all their Atlas robots and one after another. They'd be, like, you know, they'd be wrestling over they'd the have car a Would they have a board? <laughs> like, oh, what point? <laughs> like, give me, give me that case. <laughs> You're too stupid. I am smart. Maybe they would. Maybe they would actually program each one for a specific task. Like send one of them in to open the door. Right? They'd yeah. send like MIT in to open the door. Open the car door. And, and then they'd send. You know, open the your your car, sir. Yeah. Open the car door. And then another one has to climb in. All right. So where are we going now? I don't know. So. Where are we? How would you compare the process of being part of this team to the rest of your uh, college education? So my university is not going to like the answer to this question. Uh, but uh, so in all the years that I've been studying, so I, I, I'm a victory lap kind of a university student, so I'm, I'm five, six years into it at this point. In the three months over the summer that I worked on this project, I learned uh, orders of magnitude more than I have in, in school. So it, it's really driven me to, you know, I, I was considering going to graduate school and continuing my education, but after working on a project like this, considering how much that I've taken away from it, I'd much rather just go into the field and start designing things. We've seen some crazy stuff out here. We've seen some robots that look like like yeah. weird kids, and we've seen some weird, weird like robots that look like weird pets and yeah. everything else. You know? But I got something for you that's freaking hilarious. Okay, good, good. Are you ready for this? Yeah. Kelly Michael, that I'm here uh, representing the International Committee for Robot Arms Control, which is the uh, oldest of uh, now 40 
four or more organizations internationally uh, that are uh, part of the campaign to stop killer robots, which is a campaign that is now led by Human Rights Watch uh, and has made a tremendous amount of progress in the past year, in its first year. It's moved the issue from science fiction to uh, the global uh, diplomatic stage. And the issue, I think there's just an, in, an intuitive sense of horror at it, that it's, that it's an offense to, to human dignity for a human being to be killed on the decision of a machine. That we're, on, we're at the verge of, of a new arms race at, at the strategic level, where these systems are not just, we're not just talking about machines on the street killing human beings, we're talking about missiles and drones being sent on missions against the strategic forces of, a, of, of, of an opponent. We're talking about robots engaging each other in combat, drone versus drone, uh, robot sub versus robot sub. So we see the, the, the nascent U.S.-China arms race.